The mission of the Evansville Police Department, in partnership with the community, is to improve the quality of life by reducing the fear and incidence of crime, to recognize and resolve problems, and to fulfill the law enforcement needs of the citizens of Evansville, Indiana. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> I'm now here with Officer Mittendorf. Thank you for meeting with us today. Thank you. Now, what was your motivation to uh, join the SWAT team? Uh, biggest motivation would have been just wanting to be a part of the team uh, and the training. The training is really intense. How accurate do you have to be to be a sniper in the SWAT team? The main goal is that you have to be uh, a little bit finer tuned in your precision on your, on your shots. And uh, what we do is we say that we like to have in a three round group, we shoot at 100 yards that we do at one minute of an angle, which means at 100 yards, we can hold three rounds within an inch. It takes a, it's a combination of a lot of different things, but it's, you know, it's pretty intense, a little bit more intense, but, you know, I mean, it's, it's a specialty field. Thank you very much for meeting with us today. Thank you. I mean, the good thing about there's no better training really than force on force, and this is as close as you can get without using live ammo. It puts stress on the guys that, you know, you're going to go in there. You know if you get hit, you're going to get hurt a little bit. So but it's just a detergent. You can see it on some guys' clothes. Nick, you got your wrist? Show me. That's just when it hits, it just kind of explodes when it hits. just basically an expensive glorified paintball. I'm here with Sergeant Chris Pugh, one of the sergeants assigned to the Evansville SWAT team. Thanks for meeting with us today. Thank you. Now, what kind of situations call for SWAT? Uh, well, there's, there's hostage rescue, and, and that's one of the things we train for the most is hostage rescue, but bar barricaded gunmen, high-risk warrant service, pretty much anything the department uh, calls and asks us to do, we'll, we'll try to do. I mean, whatever, whatever we're, we're called to do. Now in Evansville, was there a certain event that caused the formation of SWAT, or did they just feel that they needed you know, the, the extra men? Well, in the 60s and 70s, there was uh, pretty much civil unrest all over the country. One of the, the main events, and this didn't occur in Evansville, but I just read an article the other day again that said it was basically the birthday of SWAT, and that was the Texas Tower shooting in Austin, Texas at the University of Texas where Charles Whitman killed several people, wounded several. Now, how intense is your training? Well, at times it gets to be pretty intense. I mean, we try to, we try to make it as close to real as possible. Well, that's, that's, it, it's impossible to replicate the stress that the guys are going to be under on a, on a true call out. But when there is a real call out, the stress that these guys are going to be put under and some of the things they're going to be required to do are, are, are going to be pretty intense. So as close as you can replicate that, the better off you are. And how often do you train? We train uh, monthly. Uh, normally we do two days a month. During the months of uh, May and September, we train for a full week. Do you train just in like abandoned houses or just at the military camps or where? We, we pretty much train wherever we can get. I mean, we're not, we're not real picky about if, if we can get a house that's maybe being remodeled, we can get a house that's, that the uh, Department of Metropolitan Development is, is getting ready to tear down. Uh, you know, vacant businesses, pretty much schools, anywhere, anywhere we can go to train, we'll train. We try to, we try to really have a variety of places that we train in because 
I mean, today we could have a today we could be called out to a, a single family single family dwelling. Tomorrow it could be a, a hospital or a school or, or one of the malls in town. So we really try to have a variety of places we train so guys are get get comfortable or at least have some understanding of how to operate inside the different structures. Now, how broad of an area does the Evansville SWAT team cover? Well, primarily we're responsible for the the city limits within Evansville, but there have been occasions where we've been called to assist other agencies with, within Vandenberg County and then outside of Vandenberg County also. Now within the SWAT team, or do you have specialists for certain scenarios? Yes, the SWAT team is made up of, well, you, you've got guys who would, who would be, call, be on what they would call the entry team, who would actually make the entries into a structure, whether it be an apartment, a business, or a, or a resident. Then you're gonna have, there's also snipers assigned to the team and their job is as much, I mean, they're precision riflemen. I mean, that's, that's what their training and their job is. But they're also observers, too. And they can send back a lot of intelligence, a lot of information that will help the rest of the team. We have uh, special canines that are assigned to the team. They're patrol dogs, but they also work with the team so they know how to function with the team around the equipment, around all the guys and work and, and behave in that environment. We have uh, negotiators who are assigned to the team, and they're one of the uh, one of the best tools we have. So, if you're a member of the SWAT team, are you only SWAT, or are you also a member of the police department? Every guy on the team is assigned to a different job. We're uh, considered a part-time team. The majority of the SWAT teams or tactical units in the country are part-time teams, which means they've got a different job that they do most of the time on the department. We've got guys that are assigned to uh, the canine unit, the school liaison unit, uh, patrol officers, sergeants that are assigned to different locations. So we got a variety of officers throughout the department that are on the team. And now what kind of testing and application process is involved in becoming a member of the SWAT team? First thing we do is we run the people who are applying to get onto the team through a, a physical assessment. And it's the same assessment that guys on the team are required to pass each year. Uh, if they complete the assessment, there is a uh, interview process that they also go through. And we also talk to their supervisors that they've worked for, or currently working for. We look at their past firearms, training scores, things like that. So what kind of specialty weapons does a member of the SWAT team carry? Our, our primary entry weapon is the, uh, is the M4 rifle, which is basically a version of the military M16. Uh, several of the snipers actually own their own rifles. Several of the guys own, own their own M4s also. And, but the snipers, they, they, they carry 308 rifles. They set them up the way they want. The scopes are set up the way they want. They're, uh, you know, it's, it's basically, I always say it's your, it's your work tool. We also carry what's called a uh, Heckler & Cook UMP 45, which is a, uh, 45 caliber submachine gun. The nice thing about that is it matches the 45 caliber is the same round that our that our handgun is. So we don't have to you don't have to carry as many rounds. We used to carry an, an MP5 which was a 9 millimeter weapon. We went away from the MP5 and went with, to the UMP45 which cuts down the amount of rounds we have to carry. Is the uh, is the movie SWAT a good comparison to what you guys do or is it just played up too much well it's it's played up too much but they're going to hollywood eyes if, if that's heck i don't think hollywood eyes is a word but you know they're gonna they're gonna make it a little more glamorous for tv but it you know the equipment a lot of the equipment you see uh some of the tactics you see in there some of the way the guys talk and things like that it's it's realistic like when you watch the shows dallas swat and Texas SWAT on TV, you know, that's, that's, it's, it's real. I mean, the movie SWAT, they had to, you know, add stuff to it to make a Hollywood movie, but there's, there's a lot of parts in there that are, are realistic. Well, thank you so much for meeting with us today and allowing us to view your training. I appreciate you guys doing it. Thank you. For the EVSC Community Link, I'm Tyler Melcher.